So in keeping with the theme of the last couple of videos, another common stumbling block that people run into in Game Maker frequently is trying to make surfaces and alpha play nicely together. I'm not going to be taking the deepest of dives into this today. Another Game Maker YouTuber named Reverend Greg already made a video on this that goes into far more detail than I ever would have the patience to. So if you want to go like six more levels down the rabbit hole of surfaces and alpha, I will have a link to that video in the description of this one. But if you're trying to make a Game Maker game and you ever run into an issue that looks somewhat like uh, what you see on the right half of the screen, then hopefully this video will be enough to help you sort out whatever's going on. So before I touch the code, let's take a couple steps back and look at the, uh, the way this project is set up. I've got a couple gradient sprites. There's this rainbow gradient which fades out from left to right. And then I have a solid version of the same image. Same picture minus the, uh, the fade out. And then I have a just a white gradient from left to right. And I am um, not sure if I'll actually end up using that sprite in this demo. I will include it in the GitHub version of this project in case you want to go and um, have a closer look at what's going on here with um, different sprites other than what we have. Next, uh, room one just has a checkerboard background and it has an instance of object one in it, not being very uh, creative with the names. And in the draw event of object one, we are drawing a black background, a black rectangle behind the sprite that we're going to draw. Uh, we are then drawing the gradient sprite, and then we are creating a surface. We are filling it with black so that it likewise, uh, like the, uh, the first sprite, has a black rectangle behind it. Uh, we are then drawing the gradient sprite again. Uh, drawing the surface, and then I'm just drawing these uh, these red rectangles around the original and surface versions of the sprite just so that we can see exactly where they are. So, generally, when you're using surfaces in Game Maker, you expect them to behave exactly as, um, as the application surface would. You expect anything that you draw onto a surface to, to look the same way that it would look if you were just drawing it onto the screen without a surface. Either in the regular draw event or in the draw GUI event or um, anywhere where you're drawing directly into the frame buffer. And if I were to draw the solid gradient sprite, or I guess I should call it the solid rainbow sprite really, you would see that that's exactly what we get. So the images on the left and the right look identical. And if I were to comment out drawing the uh, rainbow sprites, you would see that the, uh, the background behind them, as I mentioned, is just a black, a black fill, a black rectangle. And you would then expect if you were to draw The, the gradient version of that rainbow. And the fact that we have uh, we have Feather sort of working now in Game Maker, and I can just hover over the sprite with the mouse cursor to show you what it looks like is really nice. Um, you would expect that this would look exactly the same on the left and the right as well, but we can see that that is not what's happening. So the version on the left looks pretty much the way that you would expect it to. We have the, um, the black rectangle and then the sprite being drawn over it, and it's fading out to the color that's beneath it on the... Um, on the right side, but the version on the right, the version that's being drawn onto the surface, does not look exactly the way that we would expect it to. And it's still fading out from left to right, and the colors on the surface are what you would uh, predict them to be, but in the middle, in about like the middle, like, it's a little to the right of the middle really, uh, we have some funny alpha business going on, and that is, on the surface, <laughs> on the surface that's a little strange, because um, we would expect that when we draw something onto a surface like this, uh, if, the, uh, if the destination of what we're drawing to is filled with a um, pixels of 100% transparency, we would not expect that after we draw something else onto it that transparency would have been reduced like this. Now, if you go back to the blending equation that I spent like the last month talking about, the one where you multiply the, the, uh, the source color by the source alpha and you add that to the destination color multiplied by the inverse source alpha, and if you, uh, if you consider that that is also applied to alpha when you draw on... Um, when you're drawing sprites and blending and that kind of thing, uh, it starts to make a little bit more sense. So let's say in the uh, where my mouse cursor is over here, the alpha of the original sprite was say 50%. And if you take that value, if you take 50% and multiply it by the source alpha, which is the same value, which is also 50%. And if you add that to the destination alpha, multiply by one minus the source alpha, so that's the 100% uh, multiplied by 100% um, minus 50% is 50%. The, uh, the math works out to one quarter plus one half, and that is going to give you a final alpha of about 75%, which is indeed what we see. A short version of what I just said is that in the very same way that color is basically lerped from the uh, destination to the source color, when you draw with just regular blending, the same applies for the alpha. So the, uh, the alpha channel of uh, your destination is lerped towards the alpha channel of the source uh, with, the, um, 
like the interpolation amount being just the source's alpha. And that creates a bit of an interesting effect where the uh, the alpha in the middle range, like where the um, where the alpha of the source that's being drawn being about 50% is the lowest. Uh, that's lower than the alpha of the uh, of the final image when the, the source alpha is at 100% or when the source alpha is at 0%. Although if you're really a fan of just basic algebra and if you wanted to plot these alpha values on a graph, you would be able to see why it's doing that fairly quickly. Anyway, now that we understand the math that uh, that underlies what's going on on the right side over here, the next logical question to have is why this doesn't happen in normal drawing. And to put it simply, the um, when you draw onto the application surface in GameMaker, the alpha channel is locked, so the application surface cannot have an alpha that is less than one uh, anywhere on it. So there's a couple things you can do about this, and I'm going to try and hit the ones that I think are most likely to be helpful to most people. Uh, firstly, there is a handy function called GPU set blend enable, and we can set this to false. Uh, this is a function which will determine uh, whether or not alpha blending happens. When you draw something, uh, if you turn it off, then all pixels will be drawn at 100% opacity. So all pixels will be drawn assuming an alpha of 100%. And uh, the surface itself will still contain color information, or obviously it'll contain color information. The surface itself will still contain alpha information, but when it's drawn to the application surface, its alpha information will um, will not be um, will not be considered. And you can see now the, uh, the the versions on the left and the right do look the same. There's no funny transparency band like right sitting in the middle there. You can accomplish the same thing with a shader. So if I were to go and create myself a shader, uh, let's call it SHD no alpha. And the only thing I'm going to do to it uh, in the other than changing like the default fragment shader is going to be uh, setting gl underscore frag color equal to 1.0. So we're going to force the alpha of every fragment to be 100%. And game maker. If I were to set the no alpha shader when drawing the surface, uh, we could force the uh, force the alpha of every pixel to be 100% this way. Again, the surface still contains the alpha information. If you were to do something like save this surface to a uh, to a file, and if you were to open it up in Photoshop or and bring it back into GameMaker, you would still you would see that the alpha information is still present. And both of those could be a uh, could be potential solutions to the surfaces and alpha problem if you just need a simple fix like that. Uh, next, we could instead of uh, instead of turning off uh, alpha blending on the um, when we're drawing the surface itself, we could turn off alpha blending um, when we are drawing the sprite on the surface. All right, so we're going to turn alpha blending off when we draw the sprite, and we are going to turn it back on when we're done drawing the sprite. And this isn't going to do the same thing, but it is something that might be worth considering in some situations. So this is going to uh, because GPU set blend enable, setting that to false will just disable alpha blending entirely, and it will draw all pixels with 100%. Uh, that specifically means that it will insert the pixels red, green, blue alpha value just into the render target, uh, disregarding whatever was already there. Hey. Like it, it won't do the fancy source and destination alpha thing, and this will cause the uh, this will cause the black fill behind the uh, the sprite that was drawn to just be completely replaced. Uh, if I were to comment this line out, if I were to get rid of the draw clear function call, uh, it, it doesn't make a difference because every pixel that was filled in the surface by that uh, by that draw clear is just being replaced um, just verbatim by whatever the uh, the new pixel value is, alpha included. Uh, there is also another function, GPU set color right enable, and this will allow you to toggle off the writing of individual color channels, red, green, and blue, and alpha. Um, during the color blending stage. So we're going to leave red, green, and blue uh, as true. So the color blending is gonna be enabled for red, green, and blue, but we can disable this selectively for alpha. And this uh, this is going to cause the um, the colors to be blended. So we have the uh, the gradient and we have the, uh, the, black, the black fill behind it and the black fill has not been replaced the way that it has before because we're still doing the, uh, the color blending operation. We're still doing the color blending math at the, uh, the end of the draw pipeline, but uh, we are simply not writing the alpha value. So when we write the, uh, the final pixel color to the surface that we're drawing onto, the colors are blended, so the colors are uh, interpolated between the destination and the source color, or 
uh, whatever other blood mode you have set, but uh, the alpha channel is not actually written. The alpha value is not actually written to the surface. Hey. So that's all I'm going to cover here. Again, if you want to go like way the heck deeper down the, the color and blending and alpha blending and surfaces rabbit hole in Game Maker, I will link to, uh, to Reverend Greg's video on the subject. His video not only goes into like the basic blending math and uh, things like turning off the alpha channel uh, when you draw sprites and stuff, uh, but he also goes into just like different situations that might arise and different solutions to different situations that might arise. Uh, Pre-multiplying alpha, if you ever wondered what that option in the sprite editor does. But let's just see what this looks like with another color in the background. I am curious. The blending math should work out the same, but I'm just curious about how like good or not good this is going to look. That's actually kind of like, kind of interesting. I like these gradients. If I were to pick another color, I like, I don't know. All right, that one's a little bit more awkward than like the blue or probably cayenne or green or something like that. But anyway, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So I will have a link to Reverend Greg's video in the description of this one uh, as promised. I'm glad that this video is finally finished because I've wanted to make it for a while and um, I'm sorry for not having this ready last week. I was a little bit on the uh, on the busy side. I'll see if I can get a second one out this week to make up for lost time. If you want to contribute towards the channel, I have a Patreon, and I will have that linked in all the usual places as well. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial, and one let's make a game, currently a bullet hell. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all found that useful, and if you've had problems in the past with services and Alpha and Game Maker, I hope this video gives you some guidance on what you can do to resolve those issues, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, KeyXE, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.